Monday, July 16, and time for your Barbados Today morning news update. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Topping the news at this hour, vehicle owners who paid road tax between June 12th and June 30th will get a 75% refund. But that's only if those persons put the request in writing to the Ministry of Finance. Prime Minister Mia Motley made the announcement in a national interview with veteran journalist David Ellis last night, where she addressed some of the confusion surrounding the tax, which was abolished on July 1 and replaced with a levy on petrol. One of my ministers would have given the impression that if you put down the, what do you call it, your car, yeah. that you can literally not have to pay. And look, I have been very clear with the Barbadian public about being fair and, and against that background cabinet on Thursday agreed that those, while he may have meant so that the police doesn't catch you, it was also equally capable of being understood that if you put it down, you wouldn't have to pay. And I've asked for the numbers, the numbers are under $2 million. We've said, look, in fairness, let there be a refund for all who write the Ministry of Finance for the period of time between the 12th of June, which is the date of the budget, and the 30th of June, when the tax came to an end. She says once the letter is received, then the necessary checks will be made with the Barbados Revenue Authority. They'll just write a letter um, to the Ministry of Finance requesting a refund, as has happened in the past. If your car got in an accident and it was down for a month or two, um, invariably people would write the Ministry of Finance and ask that a proportionate part of the road tax not be payable because the car was off the road. We're saying that, look, we can't get into the details of who did and who didn't. Write the letter. We can check and see when your time came up at BRA. Um, and once that's verified, then the government will give you about 75% of what you paid, and the government will retain 25% as um, an administrative fee. Um, similarly, with commercial vehicles, um, because they have the registration fee, instead of a refund, theirs will be applied to next year's fee, so they won't need to pay one next year. And it's, it's minuscule in terms of the numbers of people on the commercial vehicles. I think it's less than 300,000. The Prime Minister also addressed the gun violence and lawlessness plaguing the country, and she's adamant that it must stop as she made reference to the latest recorded gun murder and yesterday's violence, which took place at the end of the Puff of Colour event at Searle's Quarry in Christchurch, which has been making the rounds on social media. We've had some gun incidents last week, two of them. This morning, I was sent a video this afternoon from a, 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 a fete that took place that had some people running lawless. It has to stop. And, and in order for us to do that, we have to put in the time and go and engage. This is not a case of being able to use the heavy arm of the law on people. This is a case of sitting down and talking with how people exactly, and putting structures in how place. Exactly do you propose to do that? Because I think that the Ministry of Youth Affairs has to put back in place substantive programs that take young people. A large part of the problem is people between the ages of 14, 15 and 22. You talk to older people in the community. We used to do programming, spend $5 million a year in programming. Immediately on the last government being elected, they took that and put it in summer camps, Christmas camps, and Easter camps. Three quarters of that $5 million then came to be spent in catering and not in programming. Unless you have young people in structured activity, the devil is going to find work for idle hands. Prime Minister Motley also defended the size of a cabinet in the 90-minute interview which touched on a number of issues that her Barbados Labour Party government has had to deal with since assuming office on May 24. In other news, shameful, irresponsible and extremely dangerous. That's how sexuality health empowerment, the Barbados Gays, Lesbians and All Sexuals Against Discrimination and Life in Leggings are describing one of this year's Calypso songs. The organization's charge that the song Sex Change by Calypsonian Billboard is a deliberate effort to denigrate the existence of LGBT people and in particular transgender people. They also charge that the song promotes blatant discriminatory messages which contribute to the violence perpetuated against the LGBT and the claim that a member of the community was negatively affected during Billboard's performance at a tent last Friday. 
The organization say it highlights the rampant and unwarranted hostility, intolerance and atmosphere of discrimination against gender and sexual minorities. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. In news from the region now, officials at the Georgetown Public Hospital say they are working with the relevant authorities in a bid to improve neonatal care. The assurance comes on the heels of last week's revelation in the Guyana Parliament that the hospital's neonatal intensive care unit had recorded 119 deaths. The GPHC released a statement assuring the public that every life in the neonatal intensive care unit NICU is precious to its staff and every death is distressing. The GPHC stated that it is continuously working with the Ministry of Public Health, the Pan American Health Organization and other agencies in an effort to further decrease neonatal mortality in Guyana. It went forward noting that significant gains have been made in recent years. The GPHC noted that there are only left of three NICUs in Guyana. This means that the GPHC is the only public hospital that is capable of providing neonatal care with invasive breeding support. The hospital stated that it receives the sickest and most high-risk neonates from both the public and private medical institutions countrywide and only has capacity to simultaneously support 18 babies in its NICU, adding that sick babies arrive every day. For the period June 2017 to June 2018, there were some 6,409 live births and 119 neonatal deaths at the GPHC. This is said to be significantly lower from the decade-high 295 deaths in 2014. And finally, on the international scene, U.S. President Donald Trump and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin will meet on Monday in Helsinki for their first standalone meeting since Trump took office in January 2017. But the U.S. president said he has low expectations of the meeting, which comes just days after 12 Russian intelligence officers were charged by a U.S. federal grand jury for hacking ahead of the 2016 election. More in this report from Reuters TV. Ahead of his meeting with Kremlin chief Vladimir Putin in Finland, U.S. President Donald Trump from his golf course in Scotland said he has low expectations for the summit. Uh, I, nothing bad's going to come out of it, and maybe some good will come out, but I go in with low expectations. I'm not going with high expectations. I don't, uh, I don't really, I can't tell you what's going to happen, but I can tell you what I'll be asking for, and we'll see if something comes out of it. One thing Trump said he hadn't thought of asking for was the extradition of 12 Russian intelligence officers who were charged by the U.S. last week with hacking Democratic computer networks during the 2016 election. Yeah. Would you ask Putin to, to send them here? Well, I might. I hadn't thought of that, but I certainly I'll be asking about it. But again, this was during the Obama administration. They were doing whatever it was during the Obama administration. I think the DNC should be ashamed of themselves for allowing themselves to be hacked. And on that note, we come to the end of our news update. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good morning.